So one of the challenges of skeletal expansion is that when you expand, there is a direction that the bones are going to move. Now you hope that those bones move exactly symmetrical and from a, you know, from a top down point, exactly horizontal. You want to expand as perfectly even as you, as you possibly can. Uh, but the expansion is never perfectly even. There's always more resistance on one side versus the other, depending on you know, the density of the bone in one location versus another location. There's a lot of factors that determine where those bones are actually going to end up. And so when we go way back to the original you know, MSE uh, version one, there was basically just you know, four tads and a, a screw mechanism. And there wasn't really a lot controlling where those forces went. And so what could happen is, you know, one side could break or fracture and start to move in an unwanted direction. Or if the screw wasn't set perfectly, you know, this side of the jaw could move more than that side of the jaw. And these are still challenges that we are overcoming with all the current MARPI systems on the market. With this, the idea was let's design it from the very beginning in a very precise way so that the forces that we're applying to the bone are the most controlled possible. And so they have six, eight or 10 TADs that are designed off the comb beam, the actual skull itself using skeletal landmarks. And we can pull some of those up if you wanna see those. Uh, definitely, and, and how does that differ from the custom TAD placement that can happen with a custom MARPI? Yeah, so with a custom MARPI, the, the benefit of the custom MARPI is that the TADs can go wherever you want. So you can literally find the best bone on the patient and that's where you can place the TAD. So that's actually an advantage of custom MARPI. But right now, they're not using the same comb beam landmarks to set the actual screw. And the actual screw in the middle is going to be what determines the force that are applied to those tads. And so oh. it's really setting that center screw correctly from a vertical standpoint, from a slanted standpoint. And we'll go through a case later where you know, it was set a little bit off and you can see the effect that that actually has. It makes a big, big difference. And this is something new to orthodontics as a whole, because we've never been able to expand adults. We expand kids and kids are very resilient. When you expand, if the screw's a little bit off, they still tend to expand relatively symmetrically. And when you're attached only to the teeth, it tends to even itself out because the teeth can move. Now that we're anchored to the bone and we're expanding adults, we're realizing how big of a deal this can be and how important it is that the forces that we're applying to that jaw are as ideal as possible. Right. And in what you're basically explaining in, in more detail is the asymmetry problems and the leveling issues and the cant formations that we've seen in some MARPI cases, All some, some worse than others. All of those things. And to your mind, is, is that the biggest problem that MARPI has is the asymmetry problem? I would say that's the most challenging complication uh, to, to overcome. Um, and, and sometimes you, you can't overcome it, right? So if you have a, an unwanted fracture somewhere, uh, that's, that's a fracture. Tell, tell us about some, some of the places where those fractures might occur commonly. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you commonly, probably the most common one's going to be your, uh, your, your frontal maxillary suture up here. And so that's why when we. Right where the orbital meets the. Yeah. Top nasal of the nose. bone meets maxilla meets, meets frontal bone here, basically right here between wow. your, you know, between your eyebrows. And that's the one we always try to educate patients about like, hey, you know, pressure around this area, this area and the jaws, that's all normal. Pressure in the cheeks, normal. If you're feeling a lot of pressure or pain here, like let us know. Uh, and that's why we, we, if, if we have a, a fracture there, we want to know about it as quickly as possible because if you don't know about it and you keep turning, then essentially from the orbit down, this whole side of the face will expand down and forward more than the other side. It creates wow. a, a facial asymmetry. I know there's some cases going around Reddit that show that pretty well. Definitely, yeah. yeah. There's a uh, some so bad that uh, orthognathic surgery could be needed to correct them. Well, and and not even just orthognathic surgery because our normal orthognathic surgery, Lafort one, I mean the cuts are down here. True. But this is affecting structures even higher than that. So you know it, it could be. Is it worth the risk to go in there and try to move the orbit back? Like maybe, maybe not. So you might still be working with a compromised result. I mean, this is the far end of extreme of, of what can happen. And, and by and large, this is 100% avoidable, uh, making sure that you're having good follow-up with your doctor, that you know, they're keeping an eye on the expansion and making sure you're following their instructions. Um, but again, if, if, you know, if you go rogue and you turn your expander 100 times, I mean, you don't, that's one thing that could happen. 